Yay, everything's being recorded now. Woohoo! And that's any different how? Ah. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal. Episodes 25 and 26. A quick note, we haven't looked up to see if this is actually the final two episodes of Sailor Moon Crystal, or if they're going to do more after this, because they got plenty of source material. So if these are the final episodes, they're pretty nice final episodes, but I think they're going to continue with the way the episodes ended. Well, there's definitely more material. We're at the end of Volume 5, and there's 12 volumes plus two volumes of short stories, if we want to take it that far. Hmm. And the series certainly seems to be popular enough to warrant doing the next arc. And the art in this episode was pretty good. I didn't really see much off-model on the animation. It just looked pretty solid. There were a couple of spots where the faces seemed a little squished, I would say. And it was near the end of the episode, but overall the art for both episodes was stellar. Yeah, there was like one or two spots in each episode where the phrasing of the translation read a bit awkwardly to me, but um, very minor, and I'm sure it's something they'll fix in post. But now on to what we thought about, you know, the actual content of the episode. <laughs> Both episodes are really nice. I like the fact that to get Chibi Moon to wake up to the fact that, um, you're evil is Pluto dying. Yeah, that's kind of what it took because she was jealous of everyone else and, you know, Pluto was friends with her before this whole fiasco started. But, you know, that's kind of a superhero thing. You know, something bad happens and you have superpowers and you do something about it. So, are there any differences in these two episodes from the manga? They are very spot on. I would say that the biggest difference is I didn't see any images where the other four guardians were also adding their attack power to Sailor Moons in episode 25. I was just thinking about that as I was watching it. I was like, ah, in these last two episodes, there's not a lot going on from the Sailor's cast. They're kind of just sitting there going, we're here. They don't even do that whole, give your power to Goku kind of stuff. <laughs> I know, I was like, at the very least, can you, like, hand your power over? Because you guys seem to be doing better ever since Pluto stopped time. Because before Pluto stopped time, you guys were all collapsed on the ground. But Pluto stopped time and you were all able to get up and crowd around her going, no, Pluto, don't leave us. <laughs> uh, I didn't really feel much during Pluto dying. I felt more during 26 when everyone was saying goodbye. <laughs> That part was harder, and not that Pluto dying wasn't feels, but anything that focuses too much on Chibiusa, just, I have never liked that child. <laughs> Can't even call her a child, the woman is 900 years old. <laughs> uh, you'd probably like her more if she wasn't 900 years old. Yeah, if she was actually the biological age that she appears to be, the story would both make more sense and her behavior would be more acceptable. She's lived long enough to know better than that. You know, if the average lifespan of a silver millennial is a thousand years, you don't get to pick the last hundred years to finally be a grown-up. You know what I'm trying to figure out is how they know that an average lifespan of a silver millennial is a thousand years. Because nobody should have died yet. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, if the first... Civil Millennials are Sailor Moon and the Scouts and everything, and they haven't died yet. How do you know the max age to get an average? Because everyone was granted the lifespan of a Silver Millennial, so either we have the knowledge from the original Moon Kingdom, you know, which was around for a while before it got destroyed, or take into account that everyone was different ages when they were bestowed the lifespan of a Silver Millennial. So not the core group, but... Parents, grandparents, people in their 60s would be old enough that they would have died by the time we're in 30th century Crystal Tokyo. So, either of those two options. Yeah, but I'm just like, hmm, even if they were old and they suddenly got an extra lifespan, would they really be able to figure out? It's just one of those little things that I'm actually nitpicking on because my brain's like, math, it don't work. I'm <laughs> Well, how about the silver crystal of the past is only to be used in the past? How does Sailor Moon keep transforming? <laughs> yeah, they, they break a lot of their own rules here, especially at the end when they're like, no, you can't see each other because of time problems, and then, I can't resist, I must say goodbye and thank you to my past self. I'm like, okay. Yeah, the fact that it will change history is pretty weak because what the hell have we been doing the whole time? 
Mm -hmm, Cause you know, you kind of broke that. It's the one thing about time travel, the moment you step into the past, even if no one notices you, the fact that you're there has changed something. I mean, the fact that you're breathing the air is changing stuff in the past. So you, you screwed up the moment you time traveled. And then there's another stuff about time travel, the fact that if you travel back in time and you don't figure out some way to be able to move yourself physically in the grand scheme of the universe and other large celestial bodies, you'll end up in the middle of space if you're lucky. Because people, our galaxy is moving through space. <laughs> it don't just sit still. Not only do our planets move, but then entire solar system. <laughs> Right, so unless you calculate all of that while you're calculating what date you want to go back to. Mm-hmm. But moving on from time travel, I hate time travel. Thank you, Bob and George. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. So any more of your thoughts on the episode? To get us back on topic. <laughs> <laughs> on 25, not so much. It's like, okay, we got rid of the last two henchmen. You know, one we saved and turned back to good. The other one got killed by his own side. And... All right, we're fighting a planet. Okay, okay, we, we can deal with that. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of like saving the town from the moon in Majora's Mask. Probably a little pointless. It's already too late, but what the heck, we're heroes. Yeah, the moon's a little too close there. Just the mass. Oh, we're getting into science again. And these are fantasy sales. Moving on! <laughs> I just realized I may have killed a bunch of cat girls back there talking about science. Hopefully ones that still had some lives left. So, yeah, as I mentioned before, the most recent episode kind of almost brought me to tears at a couple of points. Not heavy tears, but that kind of like, oh, this is so touching kind of tears. <laughs> yes, everything in the future has been restored. The king, the queen, and the four guardians are awake, and now that everything's fixed, we have to go home. And then you have Sailor Moon and Neo Queen Serenity doing the whole, but I think I'll miss you most of all. <laughs> Uh, that also uh, reminds me of the fact that, oh wait, the bad guy's killed. Everything fixes itself. Yeah, that's not how it works. Uh, the legendary silver crystal is the ultimate day ex machina, so. <laughs> Which, that being the case, why couldn't we just save Pluto? <laughs> uh, yeah, poor Pluto. Lots of good stuff in the news about Pluto now, though. Well, yeah. It has a heart. Isn't that cute? Going, see? D d don't you love me? I'm a real planet. <laughs> it bloody has an atmosphere. And it snows. So it's a planet, just a small one. Uh, I mean, she sacrificed herself for the other planets. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that really sucks to have a power, that, an ability that kills you if you use it. Uh, Yeah, but it's a common trope in a lot of superhero things where they main character's superpowers are like overpowered or something like well if you use your powers too much it will kill you kind of a way to cripple the power so it's not too much of i fix everything yes up until the point where the hero has to do it anyways cough silver crystal cough <laughs> but it's like if it's never happened how do you know it would kill them <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah kind of like the force of no return but apparently there's a treasure in there how do we know what do you mean how do we know no one's returned from it <laughs> So how do we know there's a treasure inside? Because people have looked everywhere else and haven't found it. Therefore, it must be in the one place no one's come back from. <laughs> yes, the armoire of invincibility. Yes. Though, all things considered, it probably didn't weigh much more than the actual armor. <laughs> Look at us, referencing old webcomics. Oh, we started that earlier, so... Mm -hmm. That's why I commented right here. <laughs> Is there anything you particularly liked about these final two episodes? Hmm. Well, not these final two episodes, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the end of the arc, so yay, no more Black Lady that cuts down on the Electric Complex stuff. <laughs> yay for Tuxedo Mask waking up, and this was very spot on to the manga. Even those still images of the Four Guardians when the Queen was giving them upgraded power, mm. it was very similar to how it was drawn in the manga. So other than the scouts attacking in episode 25 i think the main other deviation was in 26 where they were showing all the happy reunion pictures you know ray with her classmate jupiter with that underclassman and mercury and venus with Veruchan. they added one in of luna and artemis and that wasn't in the manga it was cute though oh it was very cute i'm not saying bad i'm just saying different 
Oh, yeah, I know. I'm just saying that it was I'm commenting on the fact that it was cute, not that it was bad or wasn't bad or whatever. Now give me a, uh, my train of thought just derailed, killed everyone. Again, Damn it. happens a lot. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's usually full of passengers. <laughs> but I'm sure you would really like to see the next season because I know you've been going, you know, there's normally been like four costume changes by now. Yeah, that's what I was just about to ask. Is next season when we actually get a costume change for at least Sailor Moon? Well, you know, we have new brooches and so the heart shape so you have the whole heart theme except that not really because we kind of have the bell thing but the bell mm -hmm. is also kind of a heart so <sighs> so what are your final thoughts on these two episodes i enjoyed them they were very well executed i do hope that they are going to go on to the next arc because helios was freaking beautiful in the original and i can't imagine how fantastic he's going to look if we get is with the new shiny artwork down fan girl down <laughs> says the mlp fan hello alicorn i don't have an alicorn oc as he pushes drawings underneath the bed <laughs> i'm just saying that as members of the mlp fandom it should be understandable why i would be excited about seeing a very beautifully drawn alicorn mm -hmm. Well, overall, I liked both episodes, and actually, I really do hope as well that they at least do one more season, because I'm really enjoying this reboot as well. So I hope they continue. And this has been our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal. Episodes 25 and 26, i.e. the end of Volume 5. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with these podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr. Really like this podcast? Leave a friendly comment below. Also, this is YouTube, so please subscribe. Really, really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He's currently open for commissions. All links in the description.